Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Drinking Bros Sports Companion Bonus Episode. Bonus Episode. For the weekend, Dan. Baseball. Baseball. Uh, you dumb son of a bitch. You look like Malcolm X in those glasses. Thank you. A young Malcolm X. Mm. Thanks. I'm yeah. probably going to get shot today. Uh, well, Is it too soon? According to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it uh, doesn't matter. What? It's the uh, Nation of Islam. Dan, why don't you oh. look it up? Right. Well, I mean, I'm wearing the clothes, so religion. I left my bow tie at home. Religion. Uh, yeah, you did. You're gonna you're gonna pick that up at the church tonight. I will. Yeah. <laughs> I have a no, lot. No, we're box we're here. we're doing a crazy bonus episode. Two things happened uh, this week. First of all, I'm gonna shout out or shout down, um, Mike Brownrig. Yeah, Brownrig. Brownrig. Talked about him, uh, Mike underscore Brown Rig, two G's, seven, seven. Talked about him on the last show. This is the guy that keeps sending you pictures of Russell Wilson. Of Russell Wilson, yeah. <laughs> Every time. I like that guy. I think he's funny. So do I. Not Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, so do I. So um, he's been sending me Russell Wilson pictures. Please, no one else do this because I enjoy it that it's just from this dude for two years after every Seahawks victory. Well, on the last show, I said the Seahawks can't cover. All they do is get fucking lucky. I hate betting on them. I hate watching them. It's always a fucking shit show. Yeah. And uh, I said, look, man, I'll, I'll throw 500 bucks in this game. Uh, it was Rams plus one and a half. Um, and if they don't fucking win, you know, cover, obviously, um, I will put one of your shitty Russell Wilson pictures on the show. I'll frame it and put it on my desk for the rest of the NFL season. Well, luckily... This is the one he wanted to go with, by the way. I'm going to post oh, this into, uh, to camera here. He's the worst. I, I think now, Russell Wilson is the worst. Now that Kaepernick is gone, yeah. Russell Wilson is the most unlikable person. He's the A-Rod of football now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, yeah. shut the fuck up, dude. So Holy I rolled shit. over to mybookie.com. Promo code drinking bros doubles your deposits. And uh, I went. I went hard. I fired hard, obviously. You know, but look, I'm a man of my words, and we usually post we, we post all of these, actually, in uh, Drinking Bros Sports, private yep. group on Facebook. If you're not a member, join. Post all of our picks, and I posted that with the one and a half. What do you think happened in that game, Dan? I don't have to think. I watched it. <laughs> I um, didn't know. I figured you'd be watching the baseball, actually, last night. I was watching both. I was at a nice bar downtown. Oh, were you? Where'd you go? Um, Did you go with Jeff? Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. Um... God, what the fuck was the name of that a place? A pizza joint? No. They got a bunch of TVs in there. The, yeah, that place is good. Here, I'll tell you the name of it. Because actually, if you're in town here, Tavern Law, 1832 is the name of it. Oh, shit. I don't that think place, I've been there. That place is dope. They don't serve food. That's the only thing. But they let you bring other food in. So it's one, okay. of, the, one of those types of spots. And they've got a bunch of local beers on tap and shit. Fuck yeah. At any rate, they had TVs all over the place. So I'm watching the baseball games and then the uh, the football game as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I was flipping back and forth um, between watching the Braves choke we'll get to in a minute and then um russell wilson his his game of miracles i feel like i feel like every game there's like 50 make-a-wish kids there and yeah he just tries to chuck a ball up in the air and it always seems to fall on someone's lap and the first one was uh uh god damn who caught that first ball in the end zone um not lock it D- yeah dk metcalf caught the second one. yeah um it, it was a prayer you know tiptoes back of the end zone shouldn't have been caught i was a great catch i it was a great catch on tyler lockett's part here's the thing though on the throw it genuinely looked like in the replays that he was just trying to throw the ball away yeah i thought he was too and and i think tyler lockett was just that good yeah um because if you look at tyler lockett's numbers he's great I, i just think he saves this mediocre quarterback every time either way spread was one and a half, and they only won by one. A well, half point Holloway, yeah. another victory, and the Seahawks didn't cover yet again. They should have, the Rams should have won that game if Zerline hadn't yeah. fucking pushed that Legatron. ball to the right. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, dude? Crazy. That's an easy kick for him, too. Oh, he was a 42 yarder. Yeah. That's a, basically an extra point. Yep. 35 is an extra point these days. Choke. And, yeah, I, look, man, the Rams, uh, it's tough. I know I picked them to go to the, the Super Bowl, and, and at times, in spurts, they look like a great team. Um, 
especially Jared Goff leading the you know leading the team down the field from the mm. ten all the way down in a field goal range with like a minute and what was there a minute and thirty left? <laughs> yeah, he looked good. He keeps gassing it to to Cooper Cup, and uh, he was using Everett a lot last night, the tight end. Yeah, uh, who Jesse picked up on our fantasy team right before the game started. Good on you. He dropped one hundred thirty seven yards last night, and um, off the waiver wire. Nonetheless, and uh, look, the, the Rams <laughs> choked it away. So I don't, I don't know what's going on with that team. I also thought Seattle had a, a, a lot of lucky plays. That hit on Russell Wilson that they called a uh, a late hit was bullshit. Yeah. on Clay Matthews. Oh like. yeah. So uh, look, <clears throat> man, I, the Seattle lucks out again. But uh, Brown Rig, <laughs> sorry, my man, um, they didn't, they didn't cover. That's why. Did he I, send I, you a I, picture last night? He did. He sent me that one. And it, that was, I guess, that was the one he wanted frames. Um, Does he listen to the cover. show, or is he just some guy that trolls? Yeah, you? yeah, he listens to the show. Um, he has for two years, so he's been doing this for two oh, years, and he, he he will always send it after they win because I never pick the Seahawks. Yeah, again, the reason why is it's a Christmas miracle every time, and they they never cover, man. Yeah. So they didn't cover last night. I don't have to put the picture on my desk. I'm amped about that, and I'm five hundred dollars richer, which is nice. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros, doubling that deposit, and it is what it is. I look. The biggest takeaway for me is I don't know. I don't know if the Rams can do this last. Like, I don't know if they can come back. Even with Gurley last night, they make it. They made it a point to give him the ball. He only had five carries last game. They made him a point to give him the ball, and I think he only had fifty-one yards last night. Fifteen carries, fifty-one yards, but he had two touchdowns too. He did, but uh, fifteen. Uh... 15 carries for only 51 yards is not great. Look, Seattle's got an okay defense, but they still hung, you know, 30 points on him. Yeah, and he only caught three balls for six yards, and that's really, I think, where – here's what I think we, – we talked about this with Pittsburgh the other day. I think that the, um, the Rams are one of the very few teams, maybe one of five teams in the NFL that has the ability to throw two – plus running backs out at the same time who can both catch the ball well. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they're not using that very well. No. Uh, I, don't, he only, I don't know how many times he got targeted. Actually, let me look it up right quick because now I'm curious to see how many yeah, times. Yeah, because Mal- Malcolm Brown is stashed away <laughs> on my benches in case or when Gurley goes down. Because I, yeah. I don't anticipate Gurley playing in the playoffs of fantasy football. F- playoffs of real-life football, but not fantasy. So I, I've got Malcolm Brown stashed on my bench. He had like point three points or whatever the fuck it was, but uh, this team is—it's strange, man. Uh, even like Jared Goff, it appeared as if he had a a, a good game. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, not really though, because he targeted Everett eleven times, and look, Everett four d- of those, delivered. Four of those were incompletions. That's not too bad. He targeted Cooper Cup well, seventeen times. Two of those were drops by Everett, and I like I will say yeah. that. So that's not his fault. But, but Co- for Cooper Cup. 17 targets, nine. So almost, he only, like 55% basically were caught that he threw in his direction. And he only threw five balls to Robert Woods, one ball to Brandon Cooks. Like, that, you can't do that. If, if yeah. we, we saw with the Browns last week, if somebody's going to fucking double team or overpressure OBJ, throw it to the other side, throw mm-hmm. it to Jarvis Landry, you'll fucking score 40 points and win the game. Fucking the Rams fucked up here. Yeah, man. It's um, bad play calling. Everybody's on Sean McVay's dick all the time, but this is bad play calling. This is a bad fucking offensive coordinator coordinator situation so this is two losses in a, in a row for the rams and Goff is was 29 for 49 he was what 48 for 68 last game granted he's putting up big boy yards but he only had one touchdown yeah one touchdown last night so um i'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen with this team but i am sure <coughs> for goddamn sure that uh, Russell Wilson will not be on my desk this year, which is awesome for me. Yeah. Well, the um, good news is they play the 49ers at home next week, so it'll be nice to be home. They'll probably win that game. I think they're, I think they're better than the 49ers. So do I. Um, then they go on the road to the Falcons. They'll fucking torch them. Then they play the Bengals. So they have some time to get some momentum going before they play at Pittsburgh, which could be – we'll see how Mason Rudolph develops. Could be a tough game. Mm-hmm. Um, and their defense is looking way better. Uh, Bush from Michigan actually looks great now. First right. couple of weeks he struggled, and he was trying to play a college-style linebacker, mm-hmm. and finally the Steelers are like, look, you got to fill the gaps. Right. It's not all about chasing, like running around the play to make a play from the back. Sometimes you just got to fill a gap and let somebody else make a play. This is what I've read anyways. And last week he fucking torched it. So defense is coming along. Then they got to go to the Bears, or then they got to play the Bears-Ravens. 
after that. Oof. Those are going to be two tough fucking games. Oh, yeah. Good chance they could lose both of those. Uh, I, I got them beating the, beating the Browns, at least. Bears, Ravens. Um, Not Browns. Oh, 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 Bears, Ravens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ah, yeah, that's a tough game. <laughs> Uh, the other thing we, we wanted to do on this emergency episode, this bonus episode of sports, was get into your baseball wizardry. Mm -hmm. So you and I, off camera, when we got off camera, you were like, hey, man, let's put 500 apiece on this fucking baseball game. Yep. And I said, look, I will only do this to prove how dumb it is to bet on baseball. Um, that's it. And then you and I had a, a dinner sitch planned afterwards. So uh, either way, we were getting the money back. Um, but but I did it for the audience thinking, hey, man, this is how dumb it is to bet on, on singular games of baseball. Right. And then Dan is wrong and fuck you. You weren't wrong. I'm very rarely wrong when it comes to baseball. And like I could, if you remember correctly, I called the World Series, not just who was going to win, but I called each individual game who would win each game. Yes. Um, right. Look, I called the world. I, I picked the winning team, at least. But uh, yeah. actually, I picked both teams and I picked the winning team. I didn't have the, the, the right games, but. The next night, we bet again on baseball. Same thing. Um, both were underdogs as well. Yep. And, uh, and you won. So I said, look, let's do a show about this because for me, and this was before we met and you know, got together a few years ago, I always tell the audience never, ever to bet on baseball. Um, I was only doing it to prove a point against you, and uh, you keep winning these games. So for the listeners at home, what is it? Like, how do you bet a baseball game? And usually when you do, the odds are shitty, really shitty, depending upon who's pitching. Yeah. They, so it's not well, a sexy win. To, like, it's, you're not going to make that much money. A lot of people put way too much stock in the starting pitcher, first of all. And, and particularly in the playoffs, that doesn't necessarily matter. Like, you saw with, uh, who was it? Uh, was it the Cubs? Not the Cubs. It was one of the wild card games hang on a sec let me look uh one of the wild card games i think it was the brewers actually so they started brewers nationals we had the brewers nationals and you had the a's against the devil yeah Rays. so the brewers started um what's this fucker's name they started uh woodruff woodruff, woodruff, woodruff. Yeah. and coming out of the gate craig council was like we want to get three innings out of him maybe four if he looks good that's it so yeah that that's not a lot that's that's not a lot. That's forty four percent of the game. Yeah, uh, and there's still they're like if you want a starting pitcher to go six to seven innings in this in today's game, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> people put way too much stock in who's starting the game, first of all, and not enough stock in the matchups themselves down to an individual level. So I'm fucking crazy, you know, with the uh, with the numbers and stuff. I get pretty deep into this, so I can go through the next the games for today. Yeah, and then you can kind of then we can unpack why I feel these these parts of the matchups are fucking relevant. And the good part about this is these games are going on. None of these have started yet, but at the time of this recording, yeah. So we don't know who's going to win, and then we can really pair this up because again, I'm still skeptical on betting on individual baseball games. Uh, today we got the Rays at the Astros. That's the first game up. Yep. Uh, by the way, last night I want to say that that the Dodgers. <coughs> Looked phenomenal last night. How do you beat that team? Uh, they're gonna lose tonight, but we'll get there. Oh, oh really? Yep. Is Kershaw pitching tonight? Yes. Wow. And you're calling a loss. Yeah. All right. That's not atypical for Kershaw in the playoffs. Everybody's talked about in the last couple of years how he's come, gotten a monkey off his back. He went two and three with a four and a half ERA in the playoffs last year. Get fucked. All Sorry. right. He just doesn't have it in the playoffs. Whatever it is. Um, well, we'll start with uh, Rays Astros here. <laughs> yeah, um, this is the two two o'clock game. Yep. So uh, Tyler Glasnow is pitching for the Rays. Mm -hmm. um, he he hasn't done very well against the Astros hitters in just a few games against them. So usually, if you're in, there's a couple of things. If you're a young pitcher in the playoffs, especially guys that throw really hard, uh, you have a tendency to elevate your fastball early in the game because you're excited, right? You're pumped up, your adrenaline's going. So if you're a guy like Glasnow who has a sinker and a couple other good pitches, uh, chances are you ele start elevating those pitches. You're either throwing the ball out of the zone high or you're putting the ball right down the middle belt high and people just fucking rake these balls. In today's game, everybody's hitting 20 home runs. You just can't get away with it anymore. Um, they actually hit 290 as a team off of this guy. The Astros do. 
So I expect him to get touched up a little bit maybe. Okay. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if he can keep the ball down at his own. Do you have the Astros winning this game? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the, the Astros are going to beat the Rays. And, again, this is a bonus episode. Today is October 4th. Where it's at 2. None of these games have started. Yeah, unfortunately, so we, you won't have time to bet on this one by the time this comes out. No, but we'll, uh, we're going to try to launch this episode immediately, at, like literally at 3.30 probably. Yeah. So. Um, you, you will have time for the rest of it if you're if you're listening. Next up, we get Cardinals at the Braves. Well, hold on, I got some more stuff on this. So, um, okay, uh, Verlander, his career ERA against the current players on Tampa Bay is two thirty. Or it's I'm sorry, their batting average is two thirty four against him, and he's only given up one home run against their active roster. Now, remember, Verlander struck out three hundred people this year, two fifty eight ERA, mm-hmm. and uh, he gave up, I believe, the most home runs in his entire career this season. So he got affected by this baseball just like everybody else did. He was still able to pitch around it. And keep in mind as well that his career ERA in the playoffs is 319. He's got a lot of experience. He started 24 games in the playoffs. That means a lot. Yeah. Um, he's not going to come out and elevate the ball early on. Right? And that's how, that's how he personally gets in trouble. During the regular season, starting 30 to 35 games, that's a lot of fucking games. It's a lot of, like, you have to be on all the time. You can't take a, a single pitch you take off. You're like, you just get in the quote-unquote zone for a second and forget about your scouting reports. You know, like, you know what, fuck this guy. I'm going to throw a high fastball by him. You forget it's Josh Donaldson and he hits it 400 feet. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Shit like that happens a lot. Uh, that does not happen to guys like him in the playoffs. I expect he'll have somewhere between 8 and 10 strikeouts tonight, probably seven innings, no runs. That'd okay. be my guess. Uh, so what, what do you do in a game like this? Do you take the spreads or do you take the money line? Uh, let me see what Mike Bookie's got on these bitches. Well, the game is... Uh, the money line is 210 for and minus 270 for Houston. So I would take the money line on this one. I wouldn't take the spread. Okay. What's the, what's the spread on this one? Uh, it's one and a half. Okay. Minus one and a half for Houston. And the over under seven and a half. Uh, man, I, I would never take... Uh, I would never do an over under in a playoff game. Why not? Because <clears throat> once a game becomes unwinnable, they're not going to waste any of their pitches because tomorrow's a new day, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like a regular season game where, well, we're just going to get this guy some work or whatever the fuck. Like they're going to put the the worst option they have in there, or the the option they have that's going to affect them the least the next day, which means shit can get out of hand real fast. You is that I mean? is that what the Braves did last night? Or is that yeah. what happened in the Braves game? Because look. Oh no, what the, happened the in the Braves, Braves game? Were, well, no, the, the, well, the Braves were down 7 to 3 in the ninth. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out why they left the guy in for uh, uh, the Cardinals. Cuz let, let's face it, the Braves scored 3 and they came they came close yeah. at the end. It ended up being 7-6, <laughs> but uh, so for from the Braves perspective, Chris Martin got injured. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know if he's going to be back, which is they're in trouble now, but um, with regard to the Cardinals, uh, I think they just believe in the guy. He, he threw a couple of bad pitches. It's, he's, got a, he's a young – with regard to the playoffs, he's a young pitcher, so he was probably pumped up. That happens to relievers even more so than does starting pitchers in the playoffs. They get really pumped up, throw high fastballs, and they get fucking crushed. You can't throw high fastballs to Ronald Acuna and Freddie Freeman. You just can't do it because they will fucking light those balls up, and they did. They did, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> in the ninth, who wins this series now? By the way, the Braves have lost uh, the first game of the last 10, yeah. 10 postseason games. Um, I, it's fucking insane, man. As a Braves fan, that game, I, I wanted to pick the TV up and throw it out the goddamn <laughs> know, window right? last night. This one's hard to we be. We were up 3-1 to one in the <clears throat> fucking eighth. This one is difficult to be objective about. Um, because you love them? Yeah. Um, Acuna's hustle is a problem that shit he pulled. In the seventh inning last Would night. Would you have benched him for today? Yes. Man, that's hard to bench your best player. It is. It is, but he's got to learn. Look, it's not about this year. They got him for eight more years after this. Yeah. But it's the playoffs, and it's a five-game series. People would bitch, I think. Oh, yeah, they would, yeah. I wouldn't, but <laughs> a lot of people would. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, they're not going to do it, so it doesn't matter. Um, now, they said he is starting today, so by the time this show hits you, you know whatever you're going to bet if you decide to bet on this. Uh, and the Braves are getting a runner and a half on the spread. Yeah. And it is minus 110 on the money line for each over-unders, eight and a half. Um, Fultz, pitching against Flaherty. 
Here's a, so let me go through this. Who wins this game? So Fulte has looked uh, pretty good since he returned from AAA. Mm-hmm. He did not look good earlier this season. He looked probably the worst starting pitcher in baseball, actually. Um, went down, got his got under control a little bit. Um, last year in the playoffs, he walked seven people in six innings, gave up five runs. That's kind of where it went off the rails for him. He lost his mojo or whatever in the playoffs, and he just looked like shit. Um, if he's throwing strikes earlier today – uh, earlier, early in the game, they might be okay for a couple of innings. Um, but if he's wild or wild in the strike zone, they're going to get crushed. I say they lose by four or five runs tonight. Uh, the other side is Flaherty. He throws a mid-90s fastball. He can touch high 90s. He's 23, which is a problem for the Cardinals. Um, because, like I said before, <clears throat> these guys that are young have never pitched in the playoffs before. They get fucking amped up. And they start trying to throw the ball through the catcher. Like, they just, it's crazy. I don't know, uh, maybe give them some Xanax before the game or some shit or CBD or something to calm them the fuck down a little ah, bit. Ah, maybe give them a little killcliffcbd.com. Yeah. Promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off of that deliciousness. I mean, honestly, I think it would help. Something to fucking, like, get you in the groove and calm your nerves down. Or Can you, do, can you take CBD in, uh, in baseball? It's, yeah, why would you not be able to? I don't think you can even test There's for There's so it. many weird things on those. those. There, are, there are, yeah. I don't know if you can even test for cannabinoids like that, though. I don't know how that works. I don't either. Um, at any rate, <clears throat> the bad news for Flaherty, despite, I mean, he's crushed it this year. His last 16 starts, he's got a .9 ERA. Yeah, the guy's been lights out. Like the best pitcher in baseball. So uh, not surprised to see him starting this game. I've kind of figured he would start game one, to be That's honest. That's what I thought. Um, but his favorite zone to pitch in is low and away to right-handers, right? So to the left side of the plate and down. Mm-hmm. That's like if you look at his hot zones from uh, fan graphs or, or ESPN or any of that shit, this is how I fucking figure all this shit out, by the way. I go look at data and fucking use my weird brain to, to figure this shit out. But anyways, uh, that's bad news for Josh Donaldson. He doesn't like it low and away. But Acuna loves it low and away. You saw that last night when he oh, yeah. fucking poked that ball off the wall. Because he can go to right field. <clears throat> yeah. Ozzie Albee's hot spot is low and in. Mm-hmm. Freddie Freeman loves the ball low and in. He also loves it high and away. So yeah. he, he hits the ball anywhere. It doesn't matter where you throw it to him. But, that guy um, fucking rakes. Uh, and Mark Hakis as well loves it low and in. Like those, that's where those guys hit home runs. And this team hit like 275 home runs this year, like a crazy amount of fucking home runs. Yeah. So uh, that's bad news for Flaherty. Uh, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. He, he hasn't matched up poorly against the Braves in the past, but um, I think we'll know within the first few pitches if he's going to be wild in the strike zone or if he's going to be accurate like he usually is. If he's accurate, the Braves are fucked. Honestly, you have, but you have the Cardinals winning this game, right? Um, I'll know three pitches in if they're going to win or not. I'm not going to bet on this game. Why? Because you, <clears throat> you're a homer of the Braves? No, because I, uh, he's never pitched in the playoffs before. Mm-hmm. So, um, and he's, he hasn't pitched in a lot of super high stress situations yet either. Like if he had, if, if the Cardinals had been in, uh, like here, let me look at his, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, by the way, uh, while we were talking, I just put 100 on it on mybookie.com here. Yeah. Um, just to see what it pays off at. Yep. 100 on the Braves uh, at, at the spread of plus one and a half. Yep. Pays you $60.61. Right. That's shitty. Yeah. That's another reason I say don't bet on baseball. The return isn't that great. No, they're never that great because the teams are never that unevenly matched, particularly in the playoffs, which is the only time I ever bet baseball is in the playoffs. Um, so Flaherty pitched twice against the Cubs um, in September when they were in a pennant race uh, and once against Milwaukee. He did not look good against Milwaukee. Um, against the Cubs, he looked pretty good, but, uh, again, their offense was puttered out by the end of the season. It was terrible. Right. Those aren't good. So he hasn't pitched in high-stress games against a team like the Braves that – you know, they were like the, a top five offense this season. Mm-hmm. It's totally different than the Cubs. The Cubs are not a top five offense. Uh, to be honest, I didn't think they even belonged in the pennant race. I thought they kind of fucking eked their way in. As a matter of fact, if Christian Yellick had stayed healthy down the stretch, I think the Cubs wouldn't have even been in the question or in the picture. Um, but he wasn't. So, uh, By the way, I, I just typed in the um, money line. So that means uh, money line for anybody out there it just means straight up. Who's going to win this game straight up? And uh, at a minus 110, 
uh, you put 100 down, you get $91 back. That's not bad. Um, so it's fine. It's, it's still not great. I don't know gonna, if I would bet on this individual game. I probably won't. But now that the Braves are down Chris Martin, I would bet on the Cardinals to win this series. Like if you, if you want to do a series bet, which I believe you can do on my bookie. You can, yes. I would, uh, I would go all in on the Cardinals winning this series. Really? Yep. Man, um, Chris Martin was great in cold play. It's a shame that he's not going to. Yeah, I know. Yellow. Yeah. He's yellow. Yep. He, um, was, he was all yellow. Yep. Uh, look, I, I, here's, here's where I have a tough time with the Braves. One, I love them. Two, they always disappoint me. There's not, I always say this. There's nothing better than fall playoffs. There's nothing worse than your team choking yeah. in the fall playoffs. Yeah, that's rough. And the Braves always, always seem to choke. 14 division titles in a row. One World one Series, World Series win. I'm grateful for that one. At least it was against the Indians. But yeah. um, the, f- the rest of it, man, that 2-0, that, I, that 2-0 Yankee series was devastating to me. Um, when, was it Ritz? 1998. Yeah, Layritz went yard yep. and center field. I mean, Andrew I, Jones hit two home runs the in his first game. two games. I was at that game. his first two at-bats, yeah. And um, as was a he, child. He was like 19 years old, too. Yeah. He was he was not 20 yet, no, I believe. No, he was he was incredible. <laughs> I was at that game as a child, devastating. But uh, that's why I don't have hope in the Braves ever. It's always I try to treat the Braves as if it's a happy surprise now, where yeah. it's like, oh great. You well, to me, it's about it. the numbers though. The Cardinals have a top five bullpen, despite what happened with that guy last night. Mm-hmm. To me, that was jitters. He was making, he was wild in the strike zone. Um, but despite what happened, they have a top five bullpen during the regular season this year uh the braves were just outside of the top 10 uh now they've lost one of their key players so i would put them like if i had to rank them they would be somewhere in like the 16 to 20 range which is not good enough in the playoffs okay they're like the yankees the yankees will probably make it through this first round because the twins don't have the pitching either well but speaking of the yankees they're so they're they're up next they're yeah. the game <laughs> uh right after the braves tonight minnesota at the yankees uh paxton is on the mound this is minus 190 for yeah. the Yankees. That's a big one. That's, that, Here's that, why. Those odds are awful. Here's why. Uh, James Paxson is pitching tonight. Left-handed guy. He throws mid to high 90s. Um, likes to throw the ball inside to right-handed batters, which kind of takes the short porch and right field out of the equation. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll see what happens. The Twins have two, two of their top home run hitters are lefties. Um, and he's... He, he's rough on lefties. Just a guy like that that throws that hard from the left side is tough on lefties. Uh, we'll see what happens. But still got Nelson Cruz in the air. That dude, you can throw a fastball 20 feet tall, 150 miles an hour, he's going to get his bat on it. Right. I don't know what his deal is. Some people like Josh Donaldson is like that too. You throw a ball at his eyes, he tomahawks at 450 feet. Throw a ball down the middle, it pops up to second base. It's like infuriating. But it's like Vlad Guerrero. Some people are just bad ball hitters. Yeah, so look, you put 100 on the Yankees <laughs> on this money line, right? Again, money line just means a straight-up bet, win or lose, who's going to win, Yankees or Twins. It pays off at $52 on yeah. a $100 bet. God, I mean, th- again, this is why I don't personally bet on baseball, um, uh, but you seem to be good at it. So t- tonight you've got the Yankees? Um, let me see. da 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 um, <clears throat> Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, so. Barrios is not starting. a lot of confidence. Dan, no, gotta, no. I just was reading my notes to make sure I wasn't talking out of school up. there. I, f- I feel like I just caught you with scoliosis in gym class, where it's just like, hey, let's take the pencil down your spine. You're gonna stand up. Okay. My, it's not to me. I don't. I feel like a lot of people see the logo on the jersey and start making decisions immediately. You know, I'm not kidding. Yeah. People see like, like I was. I was right about Golden State in the playoffs this year. I, I won some money on that, too, because everybody was like, oh, they'll fucking win, even when KD was healthy. When he came back, everybody was super up on him, like, nah, it's over. You were right, too. You were like, KD's going to get hurt again, and this is all over. Yeah, um, but I, I still, if, because if Clay would have played, I still would have bet money on them to win in seven. Maybe. If Clay would have been And that's healthy, the crazy yeah. thing to me. That's how great Golden State is. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but anyways, people see the... Uh, the name on the jersey and they start getting excited about it but that's not what it is it's about matchups and it's about data um flukes happen all the time but trends are trends for a reason and no n- nowhere does it, are things more predictable based on data than baseball that's why they've like as a hitter 
everything has been reduced to fucking launch angle mm-hmm. and uh and uh what do you call it hit speed or whatever the fuck it's called bat speed nope you bet. uh no nah, it is it's uh, not i know what i'm talking about dan launch angle what's the other one war no i'm kidding um it's how fast the ball comes off the bat velocity right? yeah exit velocity there exit, it yeah. is so everything for, uh, for a batter has been reduced to that 83 percent of balls hit on the ground now are outs there's no like Pete Rose is hitting ground balls through the hole anymore. Why is that? Uh, because it's a low volume kind of situation. Like you could do it, sure. You can hit line drives, sure. But now defenses are committed to moving into those spots. Like <clears throat> if you have a pitcher that can put the ball in the same spot 60% of the time and you know, hey, this guy's going to hit the fuck out of the ball, but it's going right there. It's easy. Move yeah. the guy right there. Yeah. And it happens enough where 83% of balls that are hit – below eye level basically are outs now so it's like what's the point everybody wants everybody wants to hit home runs one Mm -hmm. because that's how you get paid yeah uh and two it's it's it makes more sense statistically like an out is an out a lot of people say there's something to be said for a guy being on second with no outs and you hit a ground ball to second base and move him over to third with one out that's that's good baseball but if nobody's on base why would you not be trying to drill the ball you know what I mean? Like, get, yeah. on, get on base. I got it. But if you're Ronald Acuna and you're a leadoff hitter, who gives a shit? Hit the ball out of the ballpark. Put a run on the board. Yeah. Um, so, for the Yankees, that's what they've committed to. Nobody hits ground balls over there. Same with the Twins. They're both bruising lineups. The two, two of the best home run hitting lineups of the all two time. Best, the two best uh, home, running, yeah. home <clears throat> run hitting teams in the league this year. Yeah. And, uh, look, I, I've got the Yankees tonight. Well, um, here's the, yeah, I agree. And here's the, the thing with the Twins. Uh, Barrios, who started for the Twins, he just gets raked by Yankees hitters. Like over 300 average as a collective team. And he gives up a lot of home runs. Uh, I think their their collective on-base percentage is f- over 400 against this guy. Oof. That's 40% of the people that come up the plate are getting on base. You That's can't why these odds are like so that. shitty. Yeah. Um, they also have uh, – both of these teams actually, despite the Yankees starting pitching problems, have two of the top ten uh, bullpens in baseball. Nobody ever talks about that because the Yankees starters are so fucking bad. But you don't have to be good for long in the postseason. Two or three innings as a starter and then bring in another starter, two or three innings or a long reliever, you can make that work. Especially in a five-game series. Oh, yeah. So uh, where you get into trouble with it is in a seven-game series. Guys get worn out. Seven, yeah. Seven um, games over, what, 13 days? Yeah. 11 or 12 or 13 it's days. It's quick. It's a lot. It's quick. Um, next up, we got the, the Nationals at the Dodgers. Watch the Dodgers last night. Man, they were lights out. They look good, yeah. Uh, homeboy only gave up one hit last night. Yep. Um, two hits total for the game for, for the Nationals. They just looked outclassed all the way around. Um, better lineup, better pitching. Tonight, Clayton Kershaw is on the mound against Steven Strasburg. That is a fucking baller matchup on paper. Who you got in this one? Not Anthony? for the playoffs, though. I mean, Strasburg has done pretty well for himself in the playoffs. Um, and he's done exceptional against the Dodgers in general. Um, let, let's start with Kershaw, though. He's got <laughs> his postseason career 4.2 ERA. Yes, he's had his struggles in the past. I thought he looked pretty good the last two years, though. Last year, he went 2-3 and three in the playoffs. What was his ERA? Uh, stand by, I'm going to tell you. I looked it up before. It should be just in your mind, Dan. Uh, it's 4.2. Last, uh, last, la- last yeah, year? Yeah, excuse me. His total for his career is 4.32. Okay. Last year it was 4.2. It was his ERA, and he was 2-3 and three, uh, in, in five starts. No he, shit. Yeah. He's, he's only had one good season in the playoffs, and it was 2015 where they got bounced in the ALDS. Ah. Um, <clears throat> like, he had some good games early. But he's never won a World Series game in his career. That's crazy. He's to me. pitched in thirty postseason games. He's never won a World Series game. Um, he's also he gives up about a two eighty batting average mm-hmm. to the Nationals. It's not great. So not who great. wins? Who wins this game tonight? Well, Strasburg's had a lot of success against uh, the Dodgers, but he also gives up a fuckload of home runs to their lineup, and that's kind of his Achilles heel. It's a, a lot of right-handed power pitchers' Achilles heel this year. Um. In the regular season, he fucking owns these guys. Yeah. Right? Uh, but that doesn't necessarily always translate to the playoffs. Uh, again, people that get fucking super jazzed up 
will throw the ball all over the fucking place, especially a guy like him. But his control this year has been really good. He's pitched, let's see, he pitched in relief in that first game, three innings, two hits, four Ks. He looked good. He went. He actually got the win for that game. Uh, and his career ERA in the postseason is point four one. So I'm going to say that he lights the Dodgers up tonight. Ooh. Um, we got an upset out of Anthony. Yeah, and I also think that the Dodgers are in trouble in this series. Really? Yeah. Despite having won the first game, they won it at home. You're supposed to. That doesn't mean shit to me. The series doesn't start until it goes back to D.C. Okay. Just like any other series. But So Strasburg lights them up tonight. They lose momentum. They lose home field. Then they have to go against Scherzer. And Patrick Corbin, who, by the way, only gave up one earned run in that first game. Right. The game was 6-0, sure, but he only gave up one. Uh, and Max Scherzer, by the way, fucking dominates the Dodgers. And all the at-bats, historically, that that lineup has against them, one-third of them have been strikeouts. Okay. 33% of all the at-bats all the Dodgers players have against them have been strikeouts. So you're picking the <laughs> Nationals to upset the Dodgers in this series? Yes, I think the Nationals are going to win it in four games. Wow. I think so they're going to the they're, they're win the next three is what you're that's, saying. That's what I think, yeah. That's fucking insane. I'm, I am definitely going against you on that one. Cool. Um, I'm taking the Dodgers in this series, and uh, I'd, say, I'd say Dodgers in four. It's going to be 3-1. Um, I think their bats are too much, man. I, young Jock Peterson. Young Jock. Is that I what love that him? motherfucker. I, I do. Um, there's a rapper named that, <laughs> and uh, he is the exact opposite of that. <laughs> Young Jock is uh, a fucking playoff messiah, dude. He cranked out another ding dong last night. Yeah, he didn't even start the fucking game. No, they never. He never fucking starts. Um, but he always comes in and just and just ropes one out. Um, so uh, look, I I think the bats are too much. I like the pitching of the Dodgers. Uh, I've got the Dodgers in four on this one, but it's interesting that you're going to take the Nationals. Um, I am. Because we, we, we did a sports show on Tuesday. Obviously, we didn't know who's going to play the Dodgers yet, yep. so we didn't pick it. I said Dodgers no matter what. I'm still staying with that. Um, but I'm saying now that it's Nationals, Dodgers in four, and you're saying Nationals in four. That is crazy. If you're right about this, I'm going to start betting every single baseball <laughs> game with you. That's why Chuck. I wanted to get you on this bonus show here because – that's madness, Jock man. Peterson strikes out 40% of his at-bats in the playoffs. It doesn't matter. The other 60%, he's, he's ripping dongs, he's brother. 240. Ripping dongs. It's not ripping dongs. Look at this. How many home runs does he have? 80 in the postseason? Seven. Yeah. That's a it's lot. Not, not in 100 at-bats. That's Come on. That's amazing. Mm -mm. Postseason? Seven ding-dongs, dude? That is... Fergalicious, my man. That's one every 14.7 at bats. That wouldn't put him in the top like 40% of Major League Baseball. But it's good. The Dodgers. Because a lot of people great. don't a yeah. lot of people don't do well in the playoffs. The so Dodgers, it's great. Um they've lost what two World Series now back to back. Yeah, and they're not gonna make it this year, so it doesn't matter. But they would if they were if they were to make it, they would not win. They don't have the fucking So let me ask you this. Now now it. that now that uh we've got the Dodgers in. Against the Nationals, and you're yeah. picking the Nationals. Mm -hmm. um, Cardinals against Braves. You said the Braves were initially going to to win and, and go to the World Series. Are you going to change I, that now? Yeah, because uh, Chris Martin out being out. Okay, like it, that seems like uh, like a small thing, but it's not. Like when you have a bullpen that's on the cusp and you lose a piece, it's it just doesn't work. They don't have a defined closer over okay. there, um, and that doesn't always matter. In the postseason, but so so who gets in then from the National League? In, in I your think opinion? it might be the Nationals actually, <sighs> just because of that pitching. I mean, I I lean in the postseason. I always lean on power pitching. Yeah. So Scherzer, who's got a proven postseason track record, mm -hmm. Steven Strasburg, who has an even better proven. I mean, in l less games, but even better performance. And Patrick Corbin, same best, better games, but less are uh, less games, but better performance. Those are two of the top three pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. Scherzer got lit up. Are three night. of the top? Uh, by whom? The Brewers. Mm. He gave up what two ding dongs in it the was, first inning. Then he settled yeah. down and didn't give up any more. It was three up real quick. I, usually, shit, you give up three, you don't come back from that. What happened? I didn't think. I didn't think the the, the Cardinals would come back from three one. What did I say when right after that happened? You called me. You yeah. were talking shit, and I said this game's not going to be decided in the second inning. Yes, um, it got it got decided by an error in the what, bottom mm -hmm. of the ninth. So, yep. Dan, you that you can take that and go stuff that up your cunt hole. Look, because <laughs> of the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games, mm -hmm. 
that we've talked about, I'm seven for seven. Ah, uh, in baseball. Did you call the Braves? That's the only one I don't remember. The rest of them, yes, I'll give you. Yeah, I don't know if you called the Braves, I didn't. Losing. I don't. I don't think we talked about it. But I told. I we were on the phone last night. Uh, or actually, Jeff and I were at the bar. Yeah. And this guy was asking me who I thought was going to win. I'm like, not the Braves. Yeah. Not tonight, buddy. Wow. We'll see. So, look, I, I wanted to, to get you down on tape here tonight. I yeah. want this to be permanent out into the world for the interwebs to see if you are, are, are correct, if you were actually the messiah of this shit. And we'll see. I don't me, think anybody's the messiah, by the way. Anything can happen in these games. One guy gets hurt, and it fucks with the chemistry of your team or it fucks with the rotation of your bullpen. Like, maybe you have a guy. Injuries are rare in baseball in the playoffs, I, I feel. Not for pitchers, though. Yeah. So True. all kinds of stuff happens, blisters and all this stuff, yeah. uh, particularly since it's so much hotter this October than it normally is. But if you've got a bullpen where one guy, like Luke Jackson, for example, mm-hmm. past the eighth inning, or in the eighth inning or ninth inning, he fucking sucks. Seventh inning does really well for some reason. He's, he doesn't have the mental capacity or whatever it is to yeah. be a closer in Major League Baseball. But in the sixth and seventh innings, he does pretty well. So you lose Chris Martin, a guy who handles the eighth or ninth usually. Now Jackson's got to move up to that position. You saw what happened last night. He got fucking torched. Yeah. Every single time this season that he's been put in that position, it happens. So something as small as Chris Martin going out or maybe not even having a good game that day will fuck up an entire playoff series for, for a team. So there's so much stuff that goes into this. Any little fucking nick along the way will fuck up your whole bet. But chances are you can bet a series and get it right. Like, very rarely are there, very rarely do I get a, an entire series wrong. Well, we'll find out, D'Anthony. Yeah. We will find out, my man. Um, <laughs> real quick here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about the, the KillCliffCBD.com. Oh, yeah. Uh, promo code Drinking Bros for that. That is the best CBD drinkable on the planet. It um, is, without question. God damn it, man. And I, look, everybody's been hitting us up about this. Get it now. It says limited edition on it. I, did you talk to them? Is it going to be forever, or is this just limited? Because if so, look, I, uh, no lie, I fucking st- stocked up on cases like it was the end of the world. <laughs> it's so good. Like, when they first did it, and this isn't a criticism. I ordered eight cases. This isn't time. a criticism of them, by the way, because they're obviously very good business people. But, but they were like, yeah, we're going to do a limited run to see how it does. I'm like, look, dude, just sell your ho- house and car. Mortgage your entire family. Get money for them and put it into this. Yeah. Because you can buy them back plus some. We got the after. first cans. Yeah. And, um, I was like, holy shit. It was shit. like in a blank I called can. you, and I was like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, uh, get it if you can. KillCliffCBD.com, uh, promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off. Not only is it knocked the cans down to like four bucks a piece, which is like the, the price of a can of Monster. Um, I think you'd be charging a lot more for this, but you're free shipping too. Yeah. Uh, either way, I fucking ordered it's eight. So if it's not there by the time that this airs, sorry, it's probably me. Uh, a couple things I want to touch on here sports-wise before the weekend because um, we were talking about the, the bets for NFL and shit. Uh, the Redskins just announced they're going to start Colt McCoy at QB over Dwayne Haskins. That's good. Case Keenum. I don't know why this is. Because they're not going to fucking throw Haskins out for his first full game and it's goddamn Patriots, that's why. And I don't blame him. I wouldn't do it either. So I would, I would so wait. There, this tells me there actually was something wrong with Case Keenum, but um, here's the thing with McCoy, man. You remember last year, he broke his fucking leg. I thought he was going to die. So did I. And he's back, and he had, what, how many surgeries? He had four or five surgeries I don't know. just have, to get that leg right? Has anyone heard from Alex Smith? Is he okay? Like, he got a bad staph no. infection at one point. No, he is not okay, and he will never play again. Oh, he's definitely never going to play um, again. I'm just concerned. But Colt with McCoy, I, dude. A broken leg. I didn't think he was going to play again either. Here's what I don't understand about starting Col- Colt McCoy, right? He's a 10-year veteran. His career starts, he's 7-20. and 20. What the fuck are you doing if you're the Redskins? Give Haskins a full week, and they're, if that's your, that's your first-round pick in your future, they're I don't gonna, understand. They're just, I think they're tanking on purpose. Mm, maybe. They're going to wait until week 8 or 9, give Haskins the keys, and let him fucking play. But even even then, man, it's like if you're going to tank, that's fine. A rookie quarterback's probably going to blow it anyways. Um, I don't understand. He's that. not looked great so far, but it's hard to look great when you don't Who? know your Haskins. He's only played a half. I it's, think. it's hard to look good if you don't even know you're going to be playing. Yeah. You don't have... Like, and you your have, receivers are out. McLaren didn't play last game. Yeah. Uh, and their so. team sucks in general, so... Who knows? Um... <laughs> 
the Jags, Jaguars is important um, if you're betting Min, Minshew because a lot of Minshew mania people out there are, are throwing money on, yep. on the Jags. Uh, Jalen Ramsey is out. He's not playing. Um, so check your lineups for that. The other thing to, to watch too, man, which is interesting, is this Stephon Diggs thing. Yeah, does he end up somewhere else? Not this week, but it's next Friday. Week maybe. Um, I, I, I don't. I can know. tell you this: if he ends up for some reason being a game time scratch this week, chances are they're working on a deal. I'll say that. I, I believe so as well. Um, but if you're the Vikings, you're still in it. I, you've got to play him. I don't know if it's the Vikings. I think other teams are like, hey. Kirk Cousins sucks. You guys are going to have to go buy a new quarterback probably and then eat all this money. Why don't you just fucking – we'll give you some picks. You give us Stephon Diggs. That's Maybe. my guess. Because Maybe. I, I said this about, what, a third of the way through last year. I think Kirk Cousins is a flop. I think they need to get him out of there somehow. Like, I don't know if there's a buyout clause in that contract or some shit, but they need to get, the, they need to get that motherfucker out of there and get an actual quarterback in there before – all that talent is gone. I still think Cousins can survive. I think he's going to have a bounce back game this week. Um, you are way too I do. fucking. Uh, you have ah oh, man, and, and Trubisky too. You just you no. Give, I, you give I, these people I, too much latitude. You said that for weeks. Tr- Trubisky, about Trubisky. I, I, I'm I'm wavering on. I'm not, I'm not going to waver on Cousins yet. I think it is is a big game this week. It's been two years. Um, yeah, but they weren't. They then we missed the playoffs by like a game last year. Um, lastly, uh, Giants have said that uh, Barkley will not return this week um, versus the Vikings in this game. So it's Danny Dimes against yep. the Vikings. Darno's not coming back either. <laughs> and uh, Jarvis not, Landry might play. He is going to play actually. So he is out of the concussion protocol. He's going to play Monday nights. He fully practiced today. Um, that is great news for us fantasy owners who have Jarvis Landry. Did um, you see that the Jags are? Uh, Selling a package deal for Minshew now? Yes, to go down to... So you get a game ticket, two, yeah, you, get you get a fake get mustache. Two game tickets, yeah. you get a fake mustache, you get to go down the field and take a picture with him. <laughs> Jags, dude. Cashing in, bro. Classic Jags. There's like going to be 12 people at the game, so all 12 of them will be down on the field. Yep, with, with Minshew getting, getting photos taken. <laughs> I like it. Um, the other one is uh, Tyreek Hill. Um, fuck it, he's on half he's of out. my teams. He is out, and the, the statement from the Kansas City Chiefs is... We are in no rush to bring him well, back when until he's fully healthy, which means games we like, are undefeated and we do not yeah. care about anything but the playoffs at this point. My so. guess is he'll come back the week after next. Like they'll probably probably send him out one more week after this. If I had to guess, that's what I would that's what I would predict. Yeah, um, because again, they, there's no reason for him to rush back at this point. I don't, I don't look as a fantasy owner. It sucks, but I understand it as a team, obviously. Well, I mean, they've it's actually worked out pretty well for them because they've realized that that other kid, the young one, what's his name, McCole Hardman, yeah, Hardman is mm-hmm. like can do the same stuff. Can you imagine them on that? Uh, God, I can't remember what the name of the play is, but it's a wide out and a slot guy on the mm-hmm. left, and then a fucking wide out on the right, and it's three slants at the same time yeah can you imagine that play with those assholes with sammy watkins, sammy watkins and uh mccall hardman, hardman and, yeah. and uh, tyree kill can you imagine be... that play like how do you fucking stop that it's three of the fastest guys in the nfl be ridiculous. and the best quarterback in the nfl uh damian williams has practiced in full it looks like he's going to play so uh if you're out there for a running back um Check which which D Williams it is, by the way. I know that sounds dumb, mm. but if you're like me and you drafted Damian Williams in a couple of leagues, I backed him up with uh, uh, the other Williams. D Williams, which is Daryl Williams. So make sure you're starting the right guy because on on ESPN yep. formats it only shows up as D, D Williams and yeah. both of them. So <laughs> uh, check it before you actually hit the edit lineup button. Um, it'll it might save you the the week. God damn it. This week. Uh, other than that, uh, we got preseason NBA has already started, which seems shocking to me. Um, that's Man, that is coming up what, quick. When does the regular season start? Like the third week of October, right? The 22nd. Yeah. 22nd uh, TNT is back with, with uh, Barkley and those guys. And the NHL uh, kickoff was last night, I believe. Yeah. Fucking Penguins are playing. They look like shit. That, did they? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still sad that our boy's not out with the, the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah. Duffy. What are you going to do? Yeah. Damn it, dude. Um, Damn it, Duffy. 
He's got some. We got some breaking news here. Go ahead, fire away. Conor McGregor has been charged with assault for punching a man in Dublin, Ireland bar in April. So that fight he got into, he finally got charged with assault for it. Did he get into a fight, or did he just punch an eighty-year-old man in the face? Uh, you know, look. What are you gonna do? The guy was in his fifties, but was he really? Yeah, Ugh, that's Ireland for you. What'd it you like, say to me? Yeah, yeah I mean that's like Ireland. No, I know. Like, isn't there a classic trope of Irish people drinking and punching their relatives in the face? Yeah, there's uh, after this guy after McGregor punched this guy in the face, the guy didn't even turn back towards McGregor. He looked like he just took another drink of whatever he was drinking. <laughs> yeah, that's Ireland's like it was amazing. Like if you're in uh, New York and somebody calls you an asshole, usually you just keep on walking. Like, well, you're an asshole too. Yeah, like, I got, I, we're too busy to stop and deal with that. And Irish people are too busy drinking to stop and deal with getting punched in the face. And and McGregor was. back in August with ESPN said, "Look, I was in the wrong. That man deserved to enjoy his time in the pub without having it end the way it did." I tried to make amends, and I made amends back then, but it doesn't matter. I was in the wrong. I must come here before you and take accountability and responsibility. So, uh, look, is... man, it is what it is. I don't, I don't know if he's ever going to fight again is the problem. Yeah, uh, I don't think so. He hasn't fought since Khabib. He's making a ton of money on the fucking proper 12 stuff, mm -hmm. so he doesn't really have any motivation to fight, I don't think. <clears throat> yes, man, but... You know, oh, I, this is fucked up. To me, you still need to fight to sell whiskey. Go a, a couple more years before you sell it all. Like, I Clooney. mean, what he should do is fight one more time and then start doing commentary. Like, you don't have to keep fighting; you just have to stay in the game. I don't know if that is good enough for a guy like that. It's too much ego to sit in a booth. Maybe Bisping did it, and he's got a massive ego too. Yeah, he took out his eye last night on uh, TV. Did you see that? Mm. Yeah, he's got, I guess he's got a glass eye. Good for him. Yeah, it's like fucking right out of his head, dude. Is it one of those implants, like from Google or something? Looks like it. Looks like a nice one. It's not like a. Well, he's rich, so one -eye yeah, he's one. not. He's not gonna get a wooden eye. Is he? I always wonder with those guys how much money you make. Well, he's still working for UFC, so he's doing That's fine. Right. Yeah. Um, he's supposed to be on the show. I have his fucking number. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Mike Zimmer from uh, Minnesota just said. In response to whether or not Stefan Diggs will be playing this week, I don't know. We'll see. He's non-committal. It says, "Yeah, oof, that is not great for my fantasy lineup." This is what is so Diggs went through full practice sessions on Thursday and Friday after missing Wednesday with what he said was a cold. That to me sounds like the blue flu. Are you familiar with that? Oh yeah. So the blue flu, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure a lot of you do because you're first responders. But when cops are facing some kind of issue at work and people are being dicks to them and they want to fight back, they uh -huh. all call in sick. Right. Blue flu. So uh, that's what this sounds like to me. Man, I don't know what I... Look. But who misses practice with a cold? You're in the NFL, motherfucker. The rumor is that he's, he's going to the Bills. I'm good with that. Yeah. I, look, I think it would be fun. I, it, Josh Allen needs some, some receivers out there, and, uh, and that would be fun. <laughs> uh the Bills are three and one. They get a shot at going to the playoffs. Obviously. Well, I mean, look, they need some more talent on that. They're team. gonna. If you go to the Bills, you get to play the Dolphins and the Jets twice a year. I know. You got to play the Patriots twice a year, but I, I mean, that all evens out. Yeah, you can at least count on four games. Yeah. <laughs> look, Anthony, this was a fun little bonus. Um, I wanted to do this with you for the audience uh, because of your baseball prowess. We will put it to test. Uh, for me, though, I'm still not betting on this shit. We'll see. We will see. We will see. I, I actually, despite correctly predicting a lot of stuff, I still bet very sparingly when it comes to baseball because of what I said before. So, like, a little thing can happen, and it fucks the whole thing up. The money lines, though, in these games suck, man. Like this That, Yankees too. Game, I just bet to make it exciting. Uh, yeah, I did, too. But, like, 100 bucks in the Yankees pays you at 50. It's like, fuck you, dude. Like, you don't have to bet a lot. Like, we... Sometimes you and I will just throw down $10 bets on stuff, and then we're shit-talking each other all night. Yeah. Like, fuck you, The dude. only reason we did that 500 baseball bet because I wanted to shove it in your face. and then Well, guess you what? <laughs> yeah. You won in... Yeah. Uh, Two in a row, bitch. In the, in the bottom of the ninth. Well... No, actually, the, the Rays crushed them. Crushed the A's. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, either way, this entire show is brought to you by ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 36 months, page to go program, no interest, man. Uh, 38 bucks a month is what those fucking beds are coming in at. It's we got a new crazy. sponsor coming next week, by we the do. way. We do. Uh, we'll talk about your Malcolm X glasses Feels next week. Great. Feels well, great. I've got, I've got normal ones, too. I got these because they're funny. Yeah, uh, it, they are funny. Um, again, bonus episode. Wanted to chat about baseball and, uh, and then whatever was left over. Fuck it. Um, we're going to drop this now.
midday and then see what happens. If you're out there and you, if you feel like betting on D'Anthony's picks, fire away. I am still noncommittal on baseball, the same as Zimmer's noncommittal on Dicks mm-hmm. for the weekend. So for D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I am Ross Patterson. This is a bonus Drinking Bros Sports Companion show. Good night, everyone.